Buyer beware of dealer banks. As if it's not enough that dealers are out to get you, but you have to watch your back when it comes to their favorite lenders too. All the more reason to line up your own financing before you go car shopping. Lenders who have had recent settlements or lawsuits against them include Toyota Credit, Santander Consumer USA, and Credit Acceptance Corp. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. We'll also hit on Cap One at the end, so those of you who get those letters in the mail, stick around for that. With repossessions literally exploding in numbers since the beginning of the pandemic and the onset of outrageous car prices, we knew it was just a matter of time before lenders got blasted for predatory lending practices and cashing in on delinquent car loans just a little too fast. And that's exactly what happened to Toyota. It is reported that Toyota Motor Credit Corp. will pay $7.6 million to settle allegations in Massachusetts brought by the Office of Attorney General Andrea Campbell that it engaged in unfair lending practices. Interestingly, much of that money, about $5.5 million, will go to wiping out debts owed to Toyota by as many as 500 borrowers in Massachusetts, according to the Attorney General's office. We say that being the case quite often now, don't we, Kevin? Yes, it usually is the case that a big chunk of settlement dollars go right to impacted consumers. Yep. The balance of the money, $2.1 million in the Toyota case, will go towards paying for the years-long investigation by the Attorney General's office, costs of implementing the agreement, and some direct payments to borrowers, according to the Attorney General's office. The Toyota agreement is the latest in an ongoing and a wide-ranging investigation by the Attorney General's office into unfair and predatory collection practices by lenders and those who service their loans. The allegations against Toyota are centered on the way the lender communicated or failed to communicate with its borrowers after they defaulted on their loans and their vehicles were repossessed. One allegation was that Toyota violated consumer protection regulations that prohibit creditors like Toyota from contacting debtors more than twice in a seven-day period. Sure. The other allegation involved the adequacy of notice Toyota gave debtors about the status of their loans after repossession. Repossession of a vehicle doesn't necessarily wipe out a debt, and how much is still owed may depend on how the value of the repossessed vehicle is calculated. Does the consumer get credit for market value? or the money the car brings at auction. That's just it. Often among the complicating factors in calculating outstanding debt happens to be whether the repossessed vehicle is valued by fair market value or by the amount it sells for at the auction. Toyota failed to give certain consumers sufficient information about the calculation methods according to the AG's office. The fact that Toyota was doing this surprised us a little bit, but not these other two repeat offenders. These are the bottom dwellers in dealer finance offices. <laughs> You recall how popular Santander loans were at the last dealership we were at, Liz? For sure. The finance guys, especially that slimeball Galen, bragged them up constantly like Santander was some kind of an insider secret lender that only the world's finest finance officers yeah. used. Yet anyone can do a quick search for Santander, include words like lawsuit or settlement in the same line. If you ever accept dealer-provided financing, we recommend you research the bank they line up for you. In Santander's case, you'll come up with unbelievable headlines. Tons of them. Shoot. Santander is so bad that they were forced to publish a dedicated website for consumers with details about settlements they likely qualify for. Santander Multistate AG Settlement.com slash information for consumers. In one of the biggest settlements ever, multiple AG offices representing 33 states and the District of Columbia said the Dallas-based lender had exposed borrowers to unnecessarily risky loans with a high chance of default. In addition to paying $65 million in restitution, Santander Consumer also agreed to forgive a staggering $500 million in car loan debt to borrowers nationwide. New York's Attorney General said, Santander defrauded desperate consumers by placing them into auto loans the company knew these customers could never afford to pay, resulting in defaults and negative ratings on consumers' credit reports. As I pointed out earlier, Santander was often the favorite bank for the finance officers we knew to put car buyers into. You recall that, Liz? I sure do. They'd stand there smiling and rubbing their little greedy hands together when the customer came to finance. So... If you happen to be one of the unfortunate suckers to have a dealer place your car loan with Santander, you should call 888-222-4227. The number's on the screen. Because your loan may qualify for some form of relief. Call the number if you have any questions about your Santander loan. And even if you don't have any questions, just call the number anyways if you happen to have a Santander loan on your car. Yeah. We'll be back after this brief message from Mary Jo of the Homework Guy team. 
Hello, I am Mary Jo from the Homework Guy team. Don't Kevin and Elizabeth do a great job? We are so proud of every show our team puts out, carefully researched for accuracy and designed to help car buyers just like you. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and ring the bell so you get notifications of upcoming shows. Thank you for listening. And by the way, if you haven't already noticed, check out the light pattern on our ceiling. Pretty cool, huh? Next up on the offenders list is Credit Acceptance Corp. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and the New York State Office of Attorney General sued a predatory auto lender, Credit Acceptance Corporation, for misrepresenting the cost of credit and tricking its customers into high-cost loans on used cars. If things didn't already go bad enough at the dealership, the car buying experience turns into a nightmare for many of Credit Acceptance borrowers who face unaffordable monthly payments, vehicle repossessions, and debt collection lawsuits. Yeah. The joint complaint alleges that, among other things, credit acceptance hides costs in loan agreements and sets consumers up to fail. The complaint also alleges that credit acceptance violated New York usury limits and other consumer and investor protection laws. The lawsuit seeks to force credit acceptance to stop its illegal practices, reimburse harmed consumers, pay back wrongfully earned gains, and a penalty. The auto loans for the used cars carry exorbitant interest rates, are loaded with expensive add-on products, and saddle borrowers with debts that even the lender believes that borrowers can't afford to repay in full, yeah, according yeah. to a complaint recently filed. And this, my friends, is exactly why a car dealer would put you into a credit acceptance loan, because they allow the dealer to pack your car contract full of nonsense add-ons. Right. Most dealers shop your credit to multiple banks like Santander and Credit Acceptance Corp. And not because they're looking for the best rate for you, but rather to find a bank who will allow them to abuse you the most. Totally right. Now, last but not least is Capital One. We suggest that you might think twice about responding to those guaranteed approval letters you get in the mail from Cap One. For starters, quite often those letters are nonsense anyways. And you should know that Capital One sues more borrowers than any other bank out there. Millions of Americans every day get either a credit card offer or a pre-approved car loan letter in the mail, and we all have one company to thank for that junk mail, Capital One. Capital One is the eighth largest bank holding company in the country, with nearly 1,000 branches and 2,000 ATMs nationwide. In the 1990s, Cap One started mass marketing credit cards and car loans through the mail and hasn't looked back since. It is now the fourth largest customer of the United States Postal Service <laughs> and the second largest customer of the Canadian Post Office. Hey man, someone's got to keep them going. Yeah. It's also the largest filer of lawsuits against its own borrowers by a long shot. So if you don't want to get sued by Cap One, never borrow a dime from them. <laughs> See, if you'd like to show us some love for producing quality car market updates and honest car lending advice videos like this one, the links appearing on the screen will be easy to find in the description box down below. There's also the super thanks button now below the video too. If a tip isn't an option for you, don't worry about it in the least bit. Show us some love by subscribing and recommending our videos totally. to your friends and family. And as a viewer stated, we watch every ad in the show. That <laughs> helps too, folks. We thank you very much for that. All right. I also want to remind our viewers, if you're out walking the car lots right now, make sure you start by seeing Kevin's newest playlist, Car Market Prep Work, to help you mentally prepare to do battle with car dealers. And if you happen to be on Facebook, drop by, leave us a post comment, and give us a like and a follow. And don't forget to visit our website too, thehomeworkguy.com. We have loaded it up with free resources for car buyers like you, and we now offer a blog post too. All right, if you're new here at the Homework Guy channel, as Mary Jo said, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Join our fast-growing group of subscribers and become a part of our family. Thanks, everyone, for coming back. And to all of our faithful subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.